The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Atlanta for the OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman. This is theCUBE, this is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise, and we want to get the action. We go wherever the action is, and I want to thank uh, Red Hat and Brocade, they're the only ones who stepped up and helped us out with sponsorship. We really appreciate that. They're the best MVPs for the week here. Red Hat and Brocade, really appreciate the support. Uh, our next guest is a startup coming out of stealth called Stackstorm, Evan Powell, Chief Executive Officer based in Palo Alto. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Thank you, you you're, no, you're no strange at OpenStack and Systems we were just talking before we came on. Um, Accenta, which a CUBE alumni is running that. We got Tarkin Maynard you know, right. taking over your previous company. Um, you're coming out of stealth, congratulations. So tell the folks out there uh, about the new startup right. and what you guys are doing, and then we'll just jump in on the commentary on OpenStack. Okay, great. Well, um, as you alluded to, I've been talking about software-defined storage for years, right? But it kind of dawned on me, like, What's defining all this? What software is defining and orchestrating the whole thing? And when, when, you look, when we looked at it, and I looked at about 50 companies as EIR of Exceed last fall, uh, what I saw was there's an opportunity with DevOps and OpenStack for a new leader in operations automation. Operations automation's been around for a long time. In fact, uh, my co-founder helped create it as uh, head of engineering at Opalis is now Microsoft's uh, System Center Orchestrator. Obviously, um, Horowitz, Ben Horowitz, did pretty well with Opsware. Uh, then virtualization came along. You had mm -hmm. another wave of operations automation. We think we're right at the cusp of a third wave, and that's, uh, that's where we're focused. We also apply some uh, learning algorithms so that the system can learn. We talk about automate the automators as well. So the system can learn over time to be a better piece of operations automation. So Stackstorm is, has what kind of product? Software-defined? So it is software, um, but you can think of, and it's operations automation software, but uh, you can think of it as providing those definitions, right? What is on top of all this software-defined data center? Well, it turns out in the top operators, Facebook, they talk about FBAR. They've actually written software that closes the loop between monitoring and actions. That's Facebook. Right, but we're not all Facebook or uh, another Everyone one. Everyone wants to be Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> but they, in terms of ops. Yes, absolutely. PayPal is another. We have an advisor who runs cloud at eBay. PayPal. You know, they've written their own. But what about the rest of us? Uh, how can the OpenStack community start to close that loop? We help sponsor a project with our friends at Mirantis and Intel called uh, Mistral, which is workflow as a service. But Stackstorm is 100% open source. We use Mistral and other pieces to give you this holistic view into what the heck is happening and hopefully the ability to learn and collaborate uh, over time. Yeah, Evan, I mean, we, when we look at OpenStack, one of the white uh, spaces in the area is there, there's lots of different projects and there's lots of pieces, but I, I still need to help simplify that overall yes. operations. And it sounds like you guys are looking to fill that need. Yes, that's exactly it. I mean, the, the good news is those who figure it out, I'm talking the PayPal's, the Facebook's, et cetera, of the world, are not a few times more productive they're like 10, 100 times more productive. If you look at the ratio of- yeah, Orders of magnitude order, more. Literally two orders of magnitude more productive. If you look at how fast somebody like a PayPal can get new features out today, it blows away what the, uh, you know, my friends, uh, uh, many Nexenta customers, frankly, could do in terms of change cycle and agility. Completely blows it away. Um, but for the rest of us who can't afford to hire, you know, 50 deep computer scientists who know the full stack Right? So you got to be a full stack guy. No operations, this is DevOps, right? We call them, the, you know, like, the, and know how to work with developers. We call them like the dancing unicorns, right? There's only so many of the dancing unicorns in the world. Uh, what we need to do is have software that enables the rest of us, takes our scripts, makes them more intelligent, right? Enables us to collaborate with each other and ties into your entire operating environment. Yeah, Evan, I mean, that, that resonates uh, so much with Wikibon's been talking probably for the last four years. We've talked about hyperscale and what those guys are doing right. and how can the enterprise, how can that bleed into the enterprise? Right. So you're right, the, the, the hyperscale guys, they've got their group of PhDs, they you know, tweak their own applications and that takes care of everything so that you know, infrastructure 
for, for most of them can be pretty stupid, but but some of them do, do you know tweak it. You look at Amazon creates like hyper specialization. Um, if, I, if I go to the enterprise, I mean they need pre-built solutions, and you know most of them aren't going to you know build all their applications, and they've got all that legacy baggage. Yeah. So so how how do you help deal with that? Well, the, well, the good news is OpenStack itself, as you know, is super open, right? And the notion of a fully API-driven cloud is revolutionary. And we sort of take it for granted, some of the OpenStack stuff, and I think your typical viewer might think, oh, yeah, it's neat, it's got APIs. No, no, this means that someone like us or some other orchestration product uh, or solution does not have to write natively to all of these environments. That's a big deal. But it's also true that we have to work with whatever's there. So we're not coming in and saying, uh, you know, we can bring you Nirvana, first rip out your old stuff. You've got to work with what's there and have a hybrid environment. Um, and so we do that. We, we uh, fit into whatever monitoring or orchestration solutions you already have. And that is absolutely, absolutely fundamental. And you can start small. It can be, what are the top five things that I have to do manually to my environment? Let us help you. Uh, figure out how to automate three or four of those in a fully auditable, uh, transparent way. Um, and then we think over time that carrot approach will encourage your operators who probably don't want to carry the pager anyway, right? They want to get away from that. Uh, they want it to really automate not just the things, but start to automate themselves, or at least the late night troubleshooting piece of themselves. Yeah. So can you explain to us a little bit more about your software? You said it's open source. That right. means there's a free version of it people can try out. You've it, got kind of a freemium model or a kind of you know, open source plus. What, what, we what, will. What's the, what's so the yeah. as you know, we came out of Stealth last week. Yep. Um, and we are in uh, private beta today. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, it is 100% open source. Kind of the engine on workflow is called Mistral. It's, a, again, an OpenStack project. Uh, we have other components as well. Um, uh, including some of these integrations, including uh, sometimes we call it the decider, um, uh, which we could talk about, but a, a piece of if-then logic, um, some of the auditing capabilities. Those will all be open source. Some of them already are. And yeah, the freemium model. For OpenStack users, they want us running on-prem. If you're more of an Amazon user, and most of our users are both, but uh, you might be comfortable with us running uh, in the cloud on, on Amazon, let's say. So what's the OpenStack have to do? Obviously, you know, he, you heard the Rackspace guy, on, he's involved in the foundation, yep. the technical community and board me. I saw some love tweets last night. Oh, it went great, fantastic, we're all aligned. You know, we're trying to vet out if that's reality or not. It sounds like right. it's pretty true. I'm not, I'm not saying that they would lie on Twitter, but you know, certainly optics is everything. Um, your previous company's doing a lot of deployments. Right. Uh, next center with Tark under Tarkin. Right. Um, is it selling? I mean, you know, you know, certainly people in a room or developers are all building on OpenStack. We're the customers. I mean, yeah. So what do you? What's your take on that? Are they missing out on it? Are they? Is it just not there yet? Are there customers buying OpenStack? Um, I think. First off, it's a great question. Um, you know, a company like Nexenta uh, does in, in, in a month about 100 sales, net new customers. And my understanding is that all the OpenStack 1.0 companies put together have done about 100 customers, right? So the scale that a lot of startups, uh, at least in the storage space where I came from, are operating at is just massively greater than uh, the typical distro reseller uh, today. Having said that, uh, OpenStack's everywhere, right? I mean, it really is. Certainly, uh, if you talk to people at VMware, they view it as uh, a real issue slash opportunity. The assumption is uh, in the field that every significant vCloud deployment is competing with OpenStack. So what's the disconnect? In my opinion, the disconnect is business models. I think trying to out Red Hat, uh, Red Hat is a recipe for capital destruction, right, frankly. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be the Red Hat of OpenStack. Well. I think Red Hat has decided it's going to be the Red Hat of OpenStack, and IBM's doing well, HP's doing well, but the big guys uh, can stand behind these customers. Uh, well, Red Hat's doing well. I mean, we got the Red Hat Summit, and they're coming out, and they get some big guns there. Talk about systems guys. Yeah. They have guys from DEC. All their top leadership are, you know, they're not chumps when it comes, right. to, when it comes to systems development. But if you talk to the top operators, and, and we've talked to a bunch of them, about, about 100 of them, uh, in fact, there was at the Operator Summit at PayPal, somebody asked, so which distro are you guys running? Uh, you know, is it XYZ? Is, is it the Red Hat distro? And the answer, almost everyone said none of them. Right, we're just, OpenStack's good enough, we can get the components we want, 
direct from the source, we don't need uh, one, of these, uh, one of these companies to come along. And that is, that has got to be concerning. Our approach is, and, and we know a lot of investors who are still looking at the distro space, um, but I, I, think, I think the way to play it personally and the approach we're taking is let's build the world's best solution for what we do. And OpenStack is a huge enabler, and we tie into the fact that big operators are agnostic, not just big operators, enterprises, they don't really care. Uh, I don't view, in short, OpenStack as a product. And trying to sell OpenStack as a product is a challenge. I view it as a platform and a, and a movement and a community, the great community probably operating in my, you know, my lifetime in, in infrastructure, huge believer in it. Um, but it's, it is 30-something uh, you know, packages, as you were saying, and growing. Um, and that, that's not a product, that's a bunch of different products. And if you, you, know, you can sign a support agreement with one of the big guys, uh, but the smaller guys I think are having a challenge showing, uh, showing top line results. So, Evan, you know, you, you've got experience going up against some of the big guys and try, right. try, trying to help you know, drive change in the, the software defined uh, environment. You know, tell us what you think about the open source, the open stack community, and you know, what's the opportunity for startups? I mean, I, I, it sounds like you guys, you know, aren't only on open stack. You can also do, you know, clouds like Amazon sure. and the like. Um, you know, when is there going to be enough, you know, revenue and customer adoption uh, that we're going to see, you know, startups, you know, just all trying to? You know, I mean, there's already a bunch of startups sure. trying to hit open stack, but what's the opportunity that you see there? I, I really do think it is. You've got to be the best at something. And trying to be the best at um, we, we support OpenStack is tough, unless you are already are at scale and you're supporting Linux or, or et cetera. And that, that's a tough one. I think you got to look at, you got to do the lean startup thing, right? You got to listen to the customers, really understand a particular pain point, and figure out how you're going to own that in a way that is disruptive. And this is what we did with Nexenta, I think. Uh, we certainly disrupted uh, the heck out of that industry. Uh, in this industry, uh, this piece has already been disrupted and there's a screaming need now for somebody to come through and make it intelligent. We, we, can't, we can't wait on um, you know, our schooling or what have you to train millions of dancing unicorns, you know, full stack engineers who can code and who understand operations. There's never going to be the, enough of them. We need software to step up and do it. Uh, we're also applying some learning algorithms on top so this thing can become uh, smart. We talk about it being the brain in between sort of the muscles of config management and, and, and the nerves of monitoring. It may be a lizard brain. Uh, I mean, there's not, you know, it's not going to uh, start writing Shakespeare for you, but it's going to do some basic level. I think that's an example. I think storage, obviously there's uh, been some exits there. Um, that's another one. I was just chatting with a friend who's a CEO of one of the software-defined networking companies. I think there's some opportunities there if you understand particular use cases. I mean, one, one good one um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll throw out there is Lab Manager, right? If you look at, okay, Jenkins does some great stuff, um, but VMware made a killing early on on really understanding that QA use case. Well, maybe somebody could come up with a package that really nails that um, for the developers out there. Something beyond, um, uh, you know, Jenkins, which is great, I know CloudBees and some others are, are working there, but something that then uh, encompasses some of the networking side. Just brainstorming here, but there's some obvious pain points that people are writing themselves. I think companies need to stand behind those pain points as opposed to saying, hey, you know, we've made the ocean 0.1 degrees warmer. You know, we support, we're boiling the ocean. We're trying to make open stack easy. Well, that, that is a freaking huge mission. We're talking billions of dollars being invested, or at least that's what they say. Um, uh, I think you got to focus and own, own a set of capabilities and when. Well, they got a marketplace that they're announcing. I mean, what do you think about the marketplace? I mean, I think it's a great idea. I think uh, we at Nexenta and this company as well, we try to partner with integrators, right? Uh, who is actually helping the enterprises make that transition? And they need recipes. And, and uh, a marketplace can be a piece of that. You know, already pre-certified building blocks, Legos, if you will. Um, I think some of the top system integrators as well are building these uh, pre-stacked uh, set of Legos. And again, it's not just OpenStack. It's, you know, you bring in Chef or something like this for, uh, for configuration management. You bring in something else for security. 
that's what I think enterprises want to buy. I mean, I got to ask you the, the uh, you know the senior member of the of the industry. I love the quote about OpenStack as one of those communities, great communities of your lifetime. Um, obviously, there's been other ones. Linux yep. uh, has been fantastic. You know, Apache certainly has done an amazing job with open source, and there's a ton of open source stuff that's been great. Great communities, but the young guns that are coming out of computer science programs or <laughs> music programs or Hell, I talked to a guy who's a big data developer. He was an anthropology major. Right. So it really doesn't matter. If you've got the chops, you can come into the industry. The development mindset changed. You mentioned Agile earlier. DevOps is, is, is one of those things now where it's a movement. It's not necessarily a program language. It's right. a movement. So you know, we were talking about systems programming in our, our generation. You know, I got a systems degree. You didn't know things about compiler design and systems linkers and loaders and, right. and, 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 and whatnot. But now with the cloud, you're, it's an API economy. And Amazon has proven there's momentum there. Yes. Certainly economics, there's some trade-offs, but if that's the thesis, mm -hmm. APIs are the interfaces. Mm -hmm. What does the programming models look like? What's changing for the young guns out there? Share well, your opinion on that. Yeah, so I, I think this gets back to one of the prior questions, which is um, um, uh, the good news is that through continuous integration and, and development, you're having much smaller pieces of functionality uh, spun out frequently. So how does uh, GitHub on day one, you join uh, GitHub and they say, you know, welcome to the company. Uh, today you will push code into production. So how do they do that? Well, part of it is they have continuous integration. They have some of the stuff, frankly, that we're doing uh, already built uh, around uh, operations automation. Uh, they have a mindset, which is similar to Facebook's, right? Uh, but they also are not, when they think of an application, it's not you know 120,000 lines of code, mm -hmm. right? So they are yeah, taking yeah. this incrementalist yeah, approach. Right, a device driver. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You push some code. Put, today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before hope, lunch. Uh, yeah, I hope you have a lot of coffee. Um, but um, so they're taking this incremental it's approach. It's cultural too, right? It's like, you know, get your feet wet. It's it just, is. That's how it Go. works here. And it's wonderful. Um, uh, you know, the flip side of it is now instead of having monolithic stacks from, let's say, EMC, you know, uh, a uh, company we know well, um, a tremendous company, but uh, or you know name brands uh, like that, you have uh, loosely coupled software, uh, which is getting pushed out all the time. That's good news, uh, we think. It's tremendous, but actually then being able to orchestrate that and make it work together is actually harder. So I would argue that uh, what is happening with Agile has happened with Agile, I should say, has really boosted productivity. Um, but often it's like a tube of toothpaste, right? And then you're pushing some of the pain down to the operators. And if you don't embrace DevOps as an approach, you will get killed. All right, so I'm a customer, right? I've had an IT department. I've laid off most of the, the stuff, the expensive staff, outsourced my help desk, brought in consultants, right. have a core staff. They're doing five different things at once. One's provisioning some storage. One's DBAing. Right. You know, it's just, these are jobs. They're comfortable. They got their jobs. Right. Now, now they got to be a DevOps guy. Okay, see you at lunch. Right. Now push some code. I mean, this, this doesn't work that way. So how does a company, whether it's an enterprise or a service provider, get DevOps up and running is besides cultural? What, what, what's, what's shifting programmatically? What is some of the tooling? Is it, and what are the key things that need to get done to make it truly DevOps? Or is, just, or is it just cloud ops? Is it a different term? I, uh, first off, it's great. Again, good question. I think it always comes down to people. Uh, every transition I've seen, including software-defined storage, um, but uh, you know, before that I was at the forefront of the shift to IP-based communications, uh, mainly financials. Uh, it, it always comes down to people, and you could say politics, too, um, but uh, what skills do people have? Is the organization aligned, et cetera? So how do you get over that? You gotta get some wins, and, and we talk a lot about that, and actually, one of the great leaders, I think, uh, of this movement is, uh, happens to be an advisor of ours, Ryan uh, Grenard, who's now at eBay PayPal, and he talks about marketing. And it took us a second to realize he was talking about marketing within the organization. He's not, not giving me advice on you know, your, our brand. It's, okay, you're gonna do something, yeah. really think about the end user, and really do something incremental so they start to spread the word. Another uh, thing, again, not unique to DevOps, but worth re remembering is find your skeptics, embrace the skeptics right, within your organization. Who is that? And it'll probably be the SVP of storage because you know they move at a glacial sp pace. But anyway, but uh, I love my SVPs of storage. But you get the idea. Uh, conservative, 
you know, what are you talking about? We don't change configs. Okay, let's get them involved. Get them in a sort of a user group internally and try to get a win for them. Um, so there's some of those human uh, uh, approaches, uh, including leadership and marketing within the organization. Start small, spread the word. Embrace your skeptics. I had to tweet that out. It's an epic yeah. quote. I mean, that's yeah. true. I mean, you need to face, because everything's now transparent. You've got to address it right head on. A absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so Evan, when you talk about the skill set, you know, one of the one of the big leaders out there is VMware. You right. know, VMware did a good job of you know helping greater utilization of what they're doing, mm -hmm. change the skill sets a little, um, and you know they, they've got to play in the orchestration la layer with yes. everything they're doing with their vCloud suite. Right. Uh, can, can you maybe give a little compare and contrast where where you see you know the industry needing to go and, and where VMware is today? Yes, uh, I mean VMware is an amazing company, and uh, Stackstorm wouldn't be here without them. Uh, my co-founder. Uh, ran vSphere client engineering for years and, and helped on, on some of these acquisitions and so forth. Uh, Dimitri, Dimitri Zamin. So a uh, great, great source of talent. Uh, they've done incredible stuff. Um, I'm a little skeptical though uh, that uh, I think vCloud sales are declining. I might be wrong about that. but uh, and, and the reason is when we actually, I did a blog about it last week, but when we look at the architecture, the fundamental architecture, like how our software is uh, written, uh, infrastructure as code is not just a marketing slogan. It has real world implications for you know, where do your configurations live, right? They have to be totally externalizable. You have to be able to rebuild us as a management solution completely from the source. Uh, we can't go into a DevOps environment and say we help you manage your DevOps environment and not be DevOps friendly ourselves. In our fundamental architecture, and getting to the point that you, you're a, a monolithic piece of software now has uh, all of its APIs are all uh, fully scriptable, which I, I haven't mentioned, but that's worth mentioning. And secondly, again, that your configurations are totally externalizable, meaning you can share them. I mean, Dimitri gave a, a, a spiel at, um, it was the first time we ever really spoke publicly, we didn't talk about ourselves, but at scale, uh, Southern California Linux users uh, earlier this year, and he just has a screenshot of uh, a question was asked by a VMware user. Hey, this is great stuff, this vCloud stuff. I need to uh, export my configurations. How do I do that? And, and the answer almost verbatim was, you don't. You're not allowed to export. Why would you want to do that? Uh, next question. And so, you know, VMware is a big force. Uh, they have some of the brightest people in the industry. Uh, lots of customers whom they've made happy but it's a fundamentally different architecture if you're taking a true, that's why we think it's the third wave. They're winning at the second wave, more power to them. They have won, are winning at the second wave of operations automation. The third wave, different rules, different approach, uh, probably not a big enough market maybe for them right now, uh, and, and we're not encouraging them to enter it right now. <laughs> we'll take it, uh, thank you, uh, but, um, um, uh, but there, there is some rewriting that has to happen or refactoring. What do they have to do to be successful in, the, in that wave three? I mean, vCloud has had some issues in adoption. What's your, what's your, what do they need to do to be successful? Um, there's, you know, that, that's one I, I got to kind of punt on. I have strong ideas, um, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, they could partner with Stackstorm. That would be good. Uh, <laughs> Great answer. Yeah, but no, I think there is an architectural limitation. I do try to build uh, transparent company. So, I mean, we've, we've basically blogged about what we think they're, they're running into, um, and we're, we're open about it, and I wouldn't put it past them. And to what's the URL out. for your site so we can give the people the yeah, blog? Yeah, stack, it's just uh, stackstorm.com slash blog. Okay. Yeah. Um, other industry ideas around this platform, what do, what do you worry about for OpenStack? I mean, as someone who's been in the industry, seen the cycles before, you know all the tactics from the, the, the strong arm vendors that might want to, you know, infiltrate right. and slow down momentum. Right. Uh, what do you worry about on OpenStack? Is that one of them or other things you worry about? What are your big uh, things as, a, as an industry participant and right. a CEO of a startup where a, a thriving ecosystem matters? Right? Yes. So what do you worry about on OpenStack and what are you hopeful for? I think misset expectations uh, would be uh, the, the key thing that I worry about. Uh, back to embracing your skeptics, I think we need to embrace the trough of disappointment, right? Every one of these adoption cycles, I mean, Gart Gartner, is interesting, and I think they're right about this curve, and, and there's a reason why it's been broadly adopted. I think uh, OpenStack's got to got to go through that trough, and um, you know we need to be careful about um, 
about overselling based on promises that it is uh, easy or simple today. I think on the flip side, we need to talk about two orders of magnitude. Why is software eating the world? I mean, Andreessen's right, right? It is eating the world. But eight years ago, it was every software development project ever is late and too expensive and it doesn't work. So what changed? Agile and then DevOps changed. It is, I mean, every industry in the world is getting, I'm sure there are some that aren't mining. I bet mining is being disrupted by software done right too. I don't know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. thermostats I mean, that's evidently. I mean, is. basically, the, I, first of all, we religiously believe in that software eating the world philosophy, obviously, with some of the research we've done. Yep. But if you look at what big data, and that's gone through the same evolution. You're seeing very vertical yep. penetration of terms of yes. use cases. Clouds the same way, you're kind of hinting the same thing. Yep. Um, and if you think about it, I was asked earlier in the last panel on the crowd chat was, you know, the rack space, hey, your stock's down. Do people even understand the value of, of what you're doing with OpenStack? Because, right. you know, a skeptic or a naysay, ah, what's well, a shit investment to do that OpenStack stuff? Ah, no payout there. Right. Right. When downstream, the benefits are massive. Um, talk about that, I want to get your perspective. Well, what is the value if we can get through this new software revolution? Right. You know, I mean, everything's disrupted. Every single piece of the value chain right. is disrupted. A every single piece. So uh, a reconstruction means wealth transfer, right? It does. I mean, doesn't, I mean that is, it, isn't that where we're going here? And, and, I, and I think, in part because of the open approach, a lot of the benefits really do accrue to the, to the uh, users, right? And, and that is a big difference. And I, I believe in the open approach. So the chips are on the table and it's anyone's game at this point. Would you agree? Uh, I agree. I think w one comment would be that o there's a lot of open stack developers or developers of open DevOps uh, approaches, software, uh, who then run everything on proprietary clouds. So they need to kind of step back. I think we as a community uh, need to support, frankly, Rackspace. Uh, I mean, so it's a little more expensive, but a lot more flexible. I would gladly, I do, gladly pay that tax versus going with someone who is seen as more of a open source strip Yeah, miner. and Stu, Stu kind of peppered the Rackstace guy and said, hey, you guys, did you, did you fumble the ball? And you know, and I have, you know I, that's the question everyone's asking. And I got to give Rackspace props. Right. They stepped back at the right time for the betterment of the community. Yes. And they deserve kudos for that. They don't necessarily get recognized for it. I, no, because I, at that point in time, it was very fragile. Absolutely. What's Rackspace's yeah. agenda? They, what do they know about software? Right. They kind of took a step back and then the party got full and they're like, you know, hey, we're over here. Right. So, yeah. okay, so. You know. I, think, I think it'll pay off, but you know, when, when you can take development of a uh, piece of software that does all sorts of things, I don't know, pick one, you know, uh, uh, we just saw a train go by, right? So um, <laughs> traffic control, and you can take those cycles from years down to a day. Um, you get smarter networks. I mean, that, that's one I know because of Anyway, we have an advisor who does that kind of control. I mean, everything's so. every, if everything's connected to an IP address, yeah. and everything's addressable through software, and there's API economy with the cloud, right. then you it can, in essence, build essentially a mainframe for everything. Yeah. Every and, application and, could be a mainframe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that level of intelligence is now out there for those developers and, and, and shops that take this journey from uh, Agile through to DevOps operations. Evan, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I'll get you the final word to the, to the folks out there. Share with them, in your opinion, why in this place, in Atlanta, at this event, why this cloud stuff is so important. Why does OpenStack matter at this point in time? I think OpenStack is that infrastructure that allows us to finally fix IT. I mean, it's that fundamental. Let's get intelligence in the hands of end users massively faster, orders of magnitude faster, the right intelligence that they need uh, to actually automate and fix parts of their lives. And so I would be, uh, it'd be wrong for me not to mention StackStorm again. So we're, we're part of that puzzle, but OpenStack is a massive shift and it's tremendous to be here. Evan Powell, uh, industry guru, great to have the commentary. Congratulations on, on coming out of Stealth CEO of StackStorm. Uh, CloudStorm is here, the cloud collision, all the action here. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>